see the player make it the easy way. Put it to the glass. Let's just take two points. We don't care how we get it. That's the fourth team foul against the Cougars here in the second half. If Houston should go on to win this ball game, they would become only the fifth Southwest Conference team since 1958 to win their first nine games of the year. Texas in 63, Arkansas in 77, Texas in 78, and AM in 1980. As Reggie Roberts makes the first free throw. There's no small feat to win your first nine games in Southwest Conference play without a loss. Roberts getting one and missing one. Uh, Reggie traded three for one that time, and that's not a good percentage to work with. Nine points for the junior from McKinney. 54 41. First basket of the day. AM is now zoning. It's taken away a little bit of the Houston's inside game, but as long as the outside people pick it up like Franklin did that time, it won't make a great deal of difference to Houston. We've got a new player on the floor for Texas AM. Number 21 is Doug Lee, a 6'4 and a half freshman out of Washington, Illinois. He's a good outside shooter. And now for the first time today for Houston, Eric Dickens checks in the lineup. 6'1, 170 pound sophomore from Houston. Texas AM has called the timeout. We've got 12 minutes, 11 seconds remaining to play in the ball game. The score is 56 to 41 in favor of the Cougars over the Aggies. We'll be back in just a moment. Now we have 12 minutes and 11 seconds remaining to play in the second half here at G. Raleigh White Coliseum on the campus of Texas A&M, where the University of Houston Cougars, rated number eight in the nation, are 15 points in front by a score of 56-41. They have never really been in any difficulty in their battle here with Texas A&M. We've got a crowd of 7,457 on hand here at G. Rally White this afternoon. A&M came out of their timeout with a, well, it's called a three-quarters court full, three-quarters court press. I'll spit it out yet. Houston found water out in front of their bench, so they took a timeout to clear the water, and that's one way to defuse that press. 15, Eric Dickens in the lineup for the first time for the Cougars. Michael Young, number 43. Cougars have shut down the Yankee inside game so effectively in the second half that neither Riley Jones nor Gilbert has scored a basket here in the second half. Seven minutes and 38 seconds to play here at College Station with Texas A&M battling the eighth-rated University of Houston Cougars. But the Cougars are up by 17 now, 58-41. And it led all the way. Reggie Roberts, who has been almost the entire A&M offense here in the second half, as Texas A&M has not gotten a basket from any of its three inside people. This press shouldn't uh, cause a great deal of concern in Houston. They face it virtually every game they play in. They're usually ahead with that record. You'd expect that to be true. So they're used to attacking full and half court pressure. And he enters. Not as effective as he was in the first half. Riley's outlet pass to Roberts. He's got three men back against him. Whistle and a foul, I believe, on Doug Lee. I'm Frank Fallon, along with Dan Speakup from the Holler House on the Brasses. G. E. Raleigh White Coliseum at Texas A&M as the University of Houston Cougars with the third longest win streak in the nation go for their 13th in a row. They're second only to UNLV and North Carolina as far as win streaks are concerned in the country. And they've had it all their way here against Texas A&M. Michael Young, who has been unbelievable here in the second half, has 18 points, eight of them, in the first nine minutes of the second half. They adjust to what is necessary to be done. It makes no difference if they need outside scoring, inside scoring, they can do it. So that 17-point lead is their biggest of the ball game, 60 to 43, with 10.36 remaining, and Shelby Metcalf decides that he wants to call a timeout. So it's Houston up by 17 with 10.36 to play. We'll be back to G. Raleigh White in just a moment. Well, the University of Houston leads the nation in the margin by which they're defeating their opponents almost 20 points a game and they're having no real problems with texas a m which was thought to be maybe one of their pitfalls this year i'm frankly rather surprised i thought this game would be much closer than it currently is reggie roberts guilty of the turnover as texas a m now has turned it over nine times the cougars have turned it over six houston rated number six by the u.s basketball writers association rated number eight by both ap and upi 
They are 17 and 2 on the year. Their two losses coming to Virginia in Japan. Just in taking more time now before attempting a shot. They're utilizing the clock, making AM come out and work a little harder defensively. The other Cougar loss was to Syracuse at the Carrier Dome. So it is still 60 to 42. Taking nothing away from a fine Texas AM team, Frank, but what they really lack is a point guard. They don't have a guard out there who provides the direction that's necessary. All their guards are shooting guards. Good players, outstanding players, but not a real field general in the entire group. Again, another basket from outside. That one by Dudley. Riley, Jones, and Gilbert have not scored a bucket here in the second half for Texas AM. Riley had 14 points in the first half. Clyde Drexler has shot him down with nothing here in the second half. A follow shot by Dickens. And if you're missing the big guy, Akeem Olajuwon, he is on the Houston bench with four fouls. Now Alvin Franklin is going to hurry back into the ball game for the Cougars. Olajuwon, who leads the nation with over 100 blocks, is on the bench with four fouls for the Cougars. This is Alvin Franklin. Houston is averaging almost 20 points per game from their bench, so it really doesn't make a great deal of difference who guy puts in the ball game. Most coaches feel that his second team could uh, compete very favorably in the conference. Doug Lee. More to the inside. Let's see if the basket counts. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. KPRC TV Channel 2, Houston. We have nine minutes and one second to play at G. Raleigh White Coliseum. I'm Frank Fallon with Dan Speaker. That foul a moment ago was called on Mishaw, Larry Mishaw of the University of Houston. And the Cougars lead it by 13, 60 to 47. And the basket was counted, and I don't know who it was credited to. Doug Lee. So that is his second bucket today, and he'll have a chance to make a three-point playoff. Struck with the fact that there's not been a single point as you look at a team back in the lineup. Not a single point scored by anyone other than an Aggie guard here in the second half. And maybe you'd expect that to happen or something close to it had the entire front line of Houston been able to play the half. This half, that is, of course. But they've been in foul trouble, so they have been weakened in the, in the front line. So because of that, you would expect the Aggie front line to be doing more, perhaps, than they did in the first half. Uh, the discussion was there is no basket counted by Doug Lee. He's getting two shots here. So there was not a basket. There was not a goaltending call. And Lee is getting two shots. It's 60 to 46. Lee will try to make it 47. Didn't get it, and Akeem back in gets the rebound. So Doug Lee has... One basket and one out of two at the line. 8.50 to play in the ballgame. 60 to 46. Houston leading a and I would think we could look for a team to be rather passive the rest of the way, at least until such time that he may pick up his fifth foul. A shot of the 45-second clock, which is not coming to play in this ballgame at all. It's turned off in the last five minutes of the game in the Southwest Conference. And, of course, there is no three-point play in this league as well. Clyde Drexler will bring it in to the side. Drexler's been pretty quiet here in the second half. He had ten points at half and has added one basket to that. Uh, Clyde does so many things that don't necessarily show up on a stat sheet. That's what makes him the player that he is. He's got to feel a little frustrated. He had 14 points at the half and has gone now 12 minutes without scoring here in the second half. Somebody had told me that would happen. I'd say no way. Doug Lee, not to Reggie Roberts. Well, Benny Andrews doing a pretty good job uh, on him right now. He's fronting him, and that's the way he play against Riley. Don't let him get his hands on the ball. Now Doug Lee has two buckets, and the Aggies have cut the lead down to 12. It has been as much as 17. Two occasions. What a, what a great body control by Drexler. Boy, that was a super play. There's no way Drexler was supposed to come up with that ball, but he did. Great body control and great hand. And Reggie Roberts with the foul from behind. Well, Reggie has to watch himself in these situations. He has a tendency to go wild. He doesn't always play under control. And when you're down like you are with eight minutes left to go, control is essential. You know, another thing, Dan, as we look at it again to think about is, this is the Texas A&M team that, by its own admission, has been playing good basketball. They've won six out of their last eight. 
It's not as if Houston's catching a team that hasn't been playing well. Absolutely not. They have been on a roll. They, they did their game on Monday night. They were very confident. They thought they could definitely take Houston this Saturday afternoon. And I think what you are saying is essentially this points up how strong Houston is. Alvin Franklin with a couple of free throws. And the Cougars now move it back to a 62 to 48 margin with 7.45 remaining to play. Well, how about a trip to the Wiley Country Club in Honolulu? Next weekend, NBC Sports brings you the Hawaiian Open. Join Vince Scully as the top pros compete for $325,000 in prize money. Next Saturday, third round action starting at 5 Eastern time. And next Sunday, the final round at 4.30 Eastern time for the Hawaiian Open from the Wiley Country Club in Honolulu right here on NBC. Michael Young with a steal. Dan, we have some instant stats. What do they show us? Well, they show once again Houston is shooting 50%, 11 for 22 from the field, AM and 8 for 19 for 42%. And rather surprisingly, AM is out rebounding Houston 13 to 12. Team has just been fouled and going to the hook. Tommy Taylor tells us that it is number Jimmy Gilbert, number 30. That's his first foul of the ball game. I really expected the freshman center from AM to be much more of a factor in the ball game. He, he played very well the first time these two teams met. Well, that's what I understand. He scored well, he rebounded well, he was much more of a dominant factor than he has in this ball game. Perhaps he's had too much time to think about the rematch. A team with his 11th point of the day and Riley claims the rebound. The team not shooting that well from the free throw line, 65%, but he has nice form and a nice soft touch. Benny Anders doing the defensive work on Claude Riley right now as the Cougars stay in a box in one. That's the first time this year in the conference I've seen a box in one employed. Well, Green now is a three long one from a different area code. Well, normally with a balance in, in today's collegiate basketball, you don't have an outstanding player of such magnitude that you'd want to play a box and one on. Obviously, Coach Lewis felt that Riley was in past indications to prove him correct, quite obviously. But I must say, it has proved successful for Houston so far. Good pass by Drexler, but Young couldn't knock it, uh, Franklin couldn't knock it down. But the ball will belong to Houston. Crowd again today, 7,457. Now Tyron Knowles comes in. Reggie Roberts goes out for the Aggies. Six minutes, 42 seconds to go. AM trailing by 13. Drexler used all the hook. That is his second basket this half. He's got 14. Well, that should never happen, Frank. Claude Riley was sleeping that time. He didn't have his hands up. He wasn't even cognizant. I don't believe that that pass was coming. That's just a defensive error. Whistle had a foul on. Looks like Benny Anders. Anders of Houston. That'll be his first. Number 33 over the back. Playing Claude Riley just a little bit too tight that time. That's six in this half against Houston. The leading score, to show you how much balance we have in the Southwest Conference this year, the leading score in the league is Darrell Walker of Arkansas, averaging 18.2. Drexler is second, 17.4. Young is third, 17 points. Crowder of TCU, 16.2. And again, the Cougars come up for the basketball. Getting close to the six-minute mark, 15-point Houston lead. Hakeem. Over Gilbert. Hakeem is becoming more and more an offensive force. He has 13 points. Boy, when he does that, he's going to be the complete player. When you get the ball that low to a man seven feet tall, you'd like him to take it to the basket. Akeem still hasn't learned that move. He takes away the fade takes the fadeaway jump shot. Of course, when he does that, if he hits, fine. But if he doesn't, he's not in a very good position to rebound. Well, those last two trips down the floor, I think, typify this ball game. Houston's basket coming from Chris Gilbert with a block and a foul on Gilbert. I don't know. He, did he call that on Gilbert? I'm wondering. He, did he not call it on Doug Lee coming? Side. They'd be right. 21. Yeah, it was on Doug Lee. They had a pretty good double team going that time, and I think Lee got him with the body, or at least uh, was called for doing that. So Houston's baskets are all coming from within four or six feet now, and all of AM's baskets have to be coming from 25 feet out. And that last long bucket by Doug Lee, a good example. A team with one out of three at the line today. Two 
out of four. 12 points. 14 points for Alonjuwan. He has a good touch. When he learns some offensive moves, he'll become just that much better of an offensive player. Byron Moore pitching it off at the last moment. They belong to the Cougars. Well, he penetrated so deeply, Knowles, at that time that there really wasn't much room for him to make a pass into. AM has now turned the ball over 13 times this afternoon to Houston 7. Shelby has just taken a timeout. He wants to question uh, Dan Watson, the referee, about uh, something, what I'm not sure. So, with five minutes and 28 seconds remaining to play here at G. Raleigh White Coliseum, the University of Houston Cougars, nationally ranked number eight, lead the Texas Aggies six. Live action again as the University of Houston's Clyde Drexler just hits his 16th point of the day, his seventh basket, and the Cougars now have up the lead to 18. That's their biggest of the day, 70 to 52. Clyde is oh so smooth. He doesn't waste any energy in anything he does. Efficiency of motion. Andy Brown and the Aggies are having to shoot from way, way outside. They're getting good shooting from Kenny Brown and Doug Lee, but the Cougars are doing it so much more easily. Michael Young got on Tyron Nulls back, I believe. We want to thank Frank Schultz, Media Relations, and Jay Goldberg, Sports Information Director at the University of Houston. Ralph Carpenter, the Sports Information Director, and his assistant John Tischler here at Texas A&M for their help in producing today's telecast. And thanks also to Lisa Greider from the Southwest Conference Office for her assistance. Of course, personally, I appreciate the help of my statistician, Ed Burleson, who keeps us up to date on all the facts and figures as they unfold on the floor. Nulls had good defensive position on the board that time. The Yankees haven't had bad position, but when you're playing Houston and the ability to go over the top, sometimes it makes you look bad. It makes you look like you're not doing a good job of blocking out. Byron Nulls missing the free throw. Four and a half minutes to play. 16 points, Houston Lee. This is Reed Gettys. Benny Anders, Hakeem Olajuwon over Gilbert. Drexler kept it alive. Aggie sending five men to the board again. That time they were so deep that the rebound came out over their heads. Hakeem with another hoop. He has 16 points on the day, seven baskets, two out of four at the line. And the Cougars have an 18-point lead. That's their second time today to lead by 18. Did I say something about Hakeem playing passively because he had four fouls? There is Claude Riley's first basket of the second half. There is our Chevrolet most valuable player, Clyde Drexler of the University of Houston. That basket a moment ago by Riley. The first basket of the second half for Riley. He went 16 minutes without scoring. Lee Gettys. Well, that's the first time we've seen Houston score from way outside in a while. Well, the thing is, Gettys can do that. He is an excellent outside shooter. However, their offensive plans just don't allow or call for the guards to do that much outside shooting. Doug Lee again. Lee has hit four from considerable distance. Okay, it is a 3-13 mark now, 74-58, with the Cougars leading the Aggies by 16. Final score in the Big Ten. Indiana beats Minnesota 76 to 51. We have a timeout. Three minutes and 13 seconds remaining in our ball game with the University of Houston well on their way to their 13th consecutive win of the year. Up by 16 over the Texas Aggies. Today's telecast for Houston directed by Don Hoagland. Associate Director Dave Hoffman, Technical Director Don Geist, Electronic Graphics, Jonel Colora, and Engineering Supervisor Don Wilson. And we thank them. Kenny Brown trying to put the Aggies back in the ball game, but I'm afraid it's too little too late. Michael Young is fouled by Jimmy Gilbert. Well, after Houston virtually destroyed Baylor the other evening, Coach Haller of Baylor said, all I can say is they are awesome, and I think I would have to echo his sentiments. Well, we're talking about the Cougars' win streak, and longtime Cougar fans will remember that despite the fact this team will have won 13 in a row, the Cougars had a team back in 1967 and 68 in the Elvin Hayes era that won 31 straight ball games. 
Michael Young gets his first free throw effort of the day and he now has 19 points. He leads all scores. Has 20. Houston will be on the road Wednesday against SMU and back home Saturday night against TCU. Two minutes and 50 seconds to play. Jimmy Gilbert going inside and Drexler has drawn only his second foul of the day for our MVP. And Drexler. Dan M is forced to put the ball up in a hurry so we can look for several shots that they normally wouldn't take under different situations. Jimmy Gilbert, who has not scored a single field goal today, and Roy Jones, the other starting forward, has scored only one. As Houston has done an absolutely phenomenal job defensively of shutting down the inside against the Yankees. I think that's the one big difference between this year's Houston team and last year's edition. This year they play much better defense than last year. We said a little earlier, Dan, that not a single team in the Southwest Conference has managed to shoot 50% against this Houston team, and that's about as fine a tribute as you can pay to a team's defense. Absolutely, and every coach loves that. They love to be known as a good defensive coach. Michael Young, player control foul. He shakes Dan Watson's hand, <laughs> agreeing with the call. Well, at this point, it's academic, so he's not uh, concerned uh, too much about that call. Only two and a half minutes remain in the ballgame, and the Cougars lead it by 18. I believe, uh, have they ever been up by 20, Ed? Not yet. 18 four times. In this game, Houston was favored by only four. Tells you just how much of a surprise this spread is. Doug Lee shooting and missing, and Michael Young rebound. I'll tell you one thing, Guy Lewis still has his frontline players in there with two minutes to play, so he doesn't feel that secure about it yet. Reggie Roberts running it down. Same chance, didn't get it, Young rebound. Well, the guy feels secure, and that, I think, is a moot point. He wants to make sure that the players keep up their intensity. That's one thing you have to guard against when you're having a season as Houston is. It's easy to become complacent. A coach must guard against that. 18 points for our Chevrolet most valuable player, Clyde Drexler, after that basket, and Benny Anders blocking the shot of Claude Riley and drawing the foul. Benny again, and our Chevrolet most valuable player is Clyde Drexler of the University of Houston. Glide to glide, does it all. He scores, he rebounds, he plays defense, he assists. Just a totally complete basketball player. And if I had to pinpoint his talent, Frank, I think perhaps the thing that I would recognize him most for is his offensive rebounding ability. It's something you don't teach offensive rebounding. Basically, it's desire. Technique certainly comes into play, but the desire to go to that offensive board is what makes a great offensive rebounder. He has almost 15 more offensive rebounds than he does defensive rebounds this year. And that's pretty unusual. Most unusual. It is now 78-60. Cougars by 18 with a minute 40 to play. But the outcome is no longer in doubt. It's simply a matter of what the final margin will be. Well, in situations like this, the coach wants to make sure the team holds their composure. The players, on the other hand, have a tendency sometimes to try to pad those stats in the situation as we have right now. Yelby Metcalf, 20 years as the head man at Texas A&M. Four times his teams have won the Southwest Conference championships. 187 Southwest Conference victories, the most ever by a conference coach. This has been a fairly close series. This win will give uh, Houston a 32-21 and 21 record against Texas A&M. 6-15 and 15 in G. Raleigh White Coliseum. And as we stated earlier, their first win at A&M since uh, 1978. Reed Geddes with a couple of free throws, and it's a 20-point lead. The University of Houston Cougars obviously rated number eight in the country. Final four last year, and an excellent chance to do that again. Reggie Roberts. Of course, the folks up in Arkansas will have something to say about that when those two teams play again in early March. However, Houston won the first game between those two by 15 down at Hoppines. But Eddie Sutton's ball club, only one game behind the Cougars, so they can't... Uh, they certainly can't take anything for granted. Absolutely not. And Arkansas playing very well at the moment, uh, exemplified by their great victory over Wake Forest last weekend. Again, the next two assignments for the Cougars. They go on the road Wednesday to play SMU, a team they defeated 105 to 71 earlier this year. And then they get TCU at home a week from today, or tonight, I should say. And that's been their closest conference game to date. They uh, won that one by only three in Fort Worth. Reggie Roberts is fouled out of the ball game. Wexler, he is 
establishes the 20-point lead. That is 20 points for Clyde Drexler. Three times the Cougars have led by 20 points. Kenny Brown misses, and Drexler gets the bound. Four off, three on two break. Great offensive move by Benny Andrews. Well, we saw Benny doing his thing that time, playing one-on-one -on -one basketball, an exciting individual move. 84-62. Cougars have a pretty good following here, and they're pretty happy now over behind that Houston bench. Kenny Brown, follow shot by Claude Riley. That is his 18th point of the day, but only four of them have come here in the second half, and all of them within the last four minutes of the half. Clyde Drexler. Under 30 seconds to play, as you see. The Cougars will become only the fifth team in the Southwest Conference since 1958 to win their first nine ball games of the year. Anders may have drawn the foul. Believe he did. Anders got on the back. That is his third foul. moment ago. Second longest win streak in the nation. UNL, or third longest. UNLV winning its 19th in a row last night. And North Carolina winning its 15th in a row. There's a key. We should have a few minutes at the conclusion of this game, Frank, to talk with Coach Guy Lewis. And what do you bet he said, boy, was this a tough ball game? <laughs> I will say I should say. Well, it would really be hard to agree with that because the Cougars have I don't think they have they ever trailed Ed. Has AM ever led in this ball game one time at what point? Six to four. Okay. Since that time, Houston's assumed control and up by 11 at the half and never in serious difficulty. And with four seconds, we get a foul inside on right. Five seconds. Top scorers of the day. Michael Young has 20. Clyde Drexler has 20. Akeem Olajuwon with 16. For the Yankees, Claude Riley with 19. Reggie Roberts with 15. Doug Lee with 9. Mishaw has 7. Has 8. Really pretty good balance scoring uh, on both sides. Mishaw gets his 10th point of the day. 86-66. Oh, it is a 20-point victory for the University of Houston. Most unexpected. Came in a four-point favorite with our final score, Houston 86, Texas A&M 66. We'll be back with a wrap-up right after this.